Well, we are very lucky to have with us uh, Professor Johann Bauersach. Uh, he is uh, head of the cardiology department of the uh, Hanover School of Medicine. And he uh, came to give a lecture in our uh, Friday scientific sessions. Uh, his lecture was about uh, cardiac remodeling, about the mechanisms. He's a very well-known uh, known scientist about uh, this uh, on this problem, with a huge scientific uh, track. And I would like to ask him, what is uh, ventricular remodeling? What is its importance, and how do you see it? Yeah. Ventricular remodeling, I think, is this describes the events that occur during heart failure development and progression in the myocardium and. Uh, remodeling includes the hypertrophy of the myocardium and of the cardiomyocytes, fibrosis, which is uh, the increase of extracellular matrix uh, within the myocardium, and, and it's mainly driven by fibroblast activation. And the third hallmark of remodeling is then also the dilatation of the ventricle, which occurs, for example, after a large myocardial infarction or uh, at the end of the hypertensive heart disease and dilatation, I think, is the most important prognostic factor during uh, remodeling, and it's also of high uh, prognostic uh, value in our patients with myocardial infarction. Well, then, uh, what could be the strategies you foresee as uh, potentially more effective to deal with this problem? In particular, I would like to, uh, to have your opinion on three. One is the uh, pharmacological approach, the microRNA inhi inhibition with entagomir or whatever, and cell therapy. Yes, perhaps I start with the third one. We saw several uh, smaller studies of cell ter therapy after myocardial infarction or in chronic heart failure, and I think the data is still not convincing that uh, cell, cell therapy can improve heart function, and this uh, may be mainly uh, due to the fact that none of the cells that we applied uh, to date really make new cardiomyocytes. They perhaps improve a little bit uh, the ejection fraction, but they do not really regenerate the heart. We have to wait uh, uh, whether perhaps in the future we have better cells to transplant. With regard to the pharmacological approaches, I think uh, uh, we need uh, simple uh, uh, treatments, and so a pharmacological approach that is working would be very welcome. For example, we do together with other centers uh, in, in Europe and uh, a study on a very early application of a selective mineralocorticoid receptor antagonist to, to reduce uh, remodeling and to improve early healing. And also other approaches are followed, but this will be no easy job. But uh, when we succeed in, in improving it by pharmacological tools, then this will be uh, a possibility for broad application. With regard to microRNAs, uh, on which we focus since uh, several years, these are very new uh, uh, approaches. And I think that uh, interfering with a microRNA is very attractive, but we need a lot of work to do and uh, to see whether we can apply antagonists, so-called antagonists, uh, against microRNAs without side effects, and there will be years to do and to go into a, a large animal model before we can go into a human application. Okay, well, I have a final question uh, uh, that I actually transmit because uh, it was a question that posed uh, a resident uh, that attended your lecture. Uh, he asked me, well, after such a series of papers in Journal of Clinical Investigation, Journal of Experimental Medicine, Nature, Circulation, all that on basic science, uh, uh, you introduce him, Dr. Uh, uh, Barsach, as a uh, active cardiologist. Is that true? How can it be? How can it be? So my question is, uh, how you manage, and what is your opinion of the possibility and the importance? of uh, keeping a scientific and a clinical life uh, at the same time. What do you think of this? I think it's, ex it's extremely important that clinicians also perform, perform basic science work 
because we need these close connections. We need to go with our clinical uh, uh, experience back to the bench and investigate new possible treatments for our patients, which we then translate into the uh, clinical application again. And also from a personal view, I think it's uh, uh, very nice to have both uh, basic science work and clinical work, and I always enjoyed uh, uh, that. What you also need is um, uh, also the circumstances that you can work in both areas. You need, for example, in the beginning of your career, uh, perhaps one or two years where you work uh, only in a bi basic science lab uh, to get experience there and then when you later on go back to the residency then you can translate this experience also and I think uh, two years in basic science is no uh, a lost time uh, and on the contrary you are, will be a much better clinician when you have this basic science background. Well, Johan, thank you very much for being with us and for your uh, lecture and for your words. Thank you. Thank you very much for the invitation.